use Gauss-Jordan elimination to solve the system of equations. We have the system 3x minus 5y equal 19, and then the other equation is x plus 2y equals negative 1. For step 1, we rewrite this system into an augmented matrix. We take the coefficients, 3 and negative 5, and then we rem remember we draw this line, that represents the equal sign, and 19. This is like the x column, this is the y column, and this is the equal sign, and this is the constants column. So for the second equation, we have 1, 2, negative 1. Remember, this is like the x column, the y column, and this is the constants. Okay, we're always going to try to keep in mind where we're headed. Here is our goal. We would like to be able to have an answer in the matrix form that we can turn back easily into this and we want to easily read off the answers so ideally we would want something that looks like this 1 0 0 1 a and b so the first step is to get the 1 in the 1 1 position We can do that two ways. We can interchange two rows, or we can multiply by um, the multiplicative inverse of three. So if it's the one, one position, you can interchange two rows. Or use row operation three, um, which is one over the number to change times the row to change goes to the row to change. Okay. The easiest thing to do here would be to interchange these two rows, which is possible. Remember, each of these rows represents an equation. That would be just like writing and solving the equation like this. x plus 2y equal negative 1, writing that one first. 3x minus 5y equal 19. Nothing changes if I flip the order. Okay, so we're going to do that. That is actually ideal because if we want to do 1 over the number to change, we are going to multiply by 1 over 3, or divide by 3, same thing. And we'll get fractions here. So if you don't like fractions, you don't want to do that. So I'm going to interchange row 1 and row 2. I'm going to use that double arrow. And now I flip their positions. Okay, and notice we just got that leading one. So this guy right here is now the leading one where we need it to be. Now we want to change this guy to a zero. Okay, so to do that, we are going to get a zero in the, remember it goes rows by columns, RC cola, to remember the order. So row two, column one, so in the two, one position, we want a zero. We are going to use row operation three. So we're going to do the negative of the number to change times the row with the leading one that lines up with it, plus the row to change, and that's going back to the row to change. Okay? <clears throat> so, we're going to change this 3 to a 0. So I take the negative of the number I'm trying to change. So the negative of 3 is negative 3. I'm going to multiply by the row with the leading 1. The leading 1 was row 1. I'm going to add that plus the row to change. Well, this entry is in row 2, and I'm putting it back in row 2. Okay. What you're trying to do is figure out what number you can add 3 to to get 0. 3 plus negative 3 is 0. 
So I'm going to do some scratch work down here. And negative 3 times row 1. So I'm going to take every entry in row 1 and multiply by negative 3. I get negative 3, negative 6, and positive 3. Then I'm going to add row 2 to that. Just rewrite exactly the way it's written. 3, negative 5, and 19. Well, I get 0. I'm going to combine them. Negative 11 and 22. Okay. So this tells me to write this new result in the place of R2. So I did not change row 1, so I'm going to rewrite row 1. 1, 2, negative 1. And instead of this, I'm going to write the new answer. 0, negative 11, and 22. Now look, this is very special. We have a unit column. We successfully pivoted on the one, one entry. We made a unit column. So we have another piece of our goal. Then the next step, let me scroll down a little bit. Step three, let's see he's red again. Move to the right. Make the next unit column. Okay. To get the leading one. This time it's in the 2-2 two, two position. We are going to use the row operation 2. Which is 1 over the number in the entry that we're trying to change. Times the row we're changing. And we're going to stick that back in the row we're changing. So let me scroll back up a little bit. So the next step, I'll go ahead and write this one in blue. We are going to change negative 11 to 1. Okay? So the step is going to be 1 over negative 11, because what happens when you take negative 11 and you multiply by 1 over negative 11? you get 1. Or you can say I divide by negative 11. Um, the way the Gauss-Jordan row operations are written is division is a multiplication, but that's okay. So 1 over negative 11 times row 2, I'm going to put that answer back in row 2. So I'm going to take row 1 and rewrite it because I'm not changing it here. 1, 2, negative 1. Then I'm going to take every entry in row 2 and multiply by 1 over negative 11. Well, 0 times anything is 0. Negative 11 times 1 over negative 11 is positive 1. I did that on purpose. If you do not get the positive 1, you screwed it up. Either you messed up your multiplication or you have the wrong operation. And then I do 22 times 1 over negative 11. I should get negative 2. Okay. Now, if I go back to my goal at the top. I got this guy right here. So I'm going to circle this. That's what I'm pivoting on. Now I want to change the 2 in the 1, 2 entry to a 0. Change that guy right there to a 0. How do I make zeros? Do the negative of the number to change times the row with the leading 1 plus the row to change goes to the row to change. Let me write that down right here again.
Okay. So let me scroll up. I want to change that to, I want it to be a zero. So I'm going to do negative two times the row with the one that's in, that lines up with it. I just made this leading one. That's why we make the ones first. So we have a one that we can just multiply by the um, additive inverse. So negative two times one will give me the negative two that I need to add to positive two. So negative two times row two, that gives me a negative two in this entry so that when I add them, add row one, I get zero. I'm gonna put that back in row one. So let me do some scratch. Kind of running out of room. I'll do scratch right here. Negative two row two, I multiply every entry in here by negative two. So zero, negative two, positive four. I'm gonna add that to row one. One, two, negative one. If I add, I get one, zero, and three. So my final answer, first um, line is one, zero, three. I did not change row two, so I have zero, one, negative two. Okay, this guy is a unit column, and so is this guy. We successfully pivoted on the 2, 2 entry this time because that's where the leading one is, and we made a unit column. So let's go back up to our goal and see where we are. Looks like we have it. If you look back at our final answer, this is in row reduced form. And you can see it's very easy to read off our answers. Remember this was the X column, this was the Y column, and this was the constants column. So we can just read off X plus zero Y equals three, which just means x equal three. And then zero x plus y equals negative two, y equals negative two. And there's your answer. And I know guys, this is very tedious. You could have solved it four times now, doing it the other way. But if you really get this process down, this can go very, very quickly. It took a long time because I was writing all these notes. But this really is not that bad of a problem. So. Let me just kind of line up. This was our scratch all over here. And all over here. Okay. Wasn't that fun?